I am Cambodian. I'm a minoritized language advocate. So we often hear about the word federation. Federation. What is a federation? You have the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Germany. America is a federation. Federated states of Malaysia. What is a federation show? When you have different states coming together to form an individual entity. Taking you back a little bit to the history of the area called Nigeria before 1897. In Nigeria, we had states made up of different nations. Now, these nations had their governments, even those ones that had no central government, they had their governments in the village or at the village level. Those are state governments. Now, my question is, what languages were they speaking in those states, in those African states? So what languages were they speaking in those states before the colonial regime? Before 1897, you have little kingdoms, little states, all using their African languages as their means of communication. And how do they communicate interstate wisely between states? How do they communicate? We discover that these people are only multilingual, so they had to communicate with their respective mother tongues and that was not a barrier at all so long as trade was going on so long as they, they could communicate their wants they could broker treaties it was okay but what happened after the British took over the government we had the introduction of the English language and uh, people who never knew the language had to learn it in the schools which were established by the colonial government of missionaries and so knowledge the knowledge of the speaking and writing or literacy in English language increased and today we are in the 21st century in the 24th year the second decade of the 21st century this is more than 100 years and what we have today is a complete or partial neglect of the native languages in favor of the English language. Now, what negative implication has that on us as a people and on our identity as Africans? Not just Africans, but we have this same problem all over the world. We have this case everywhere the human population exists especially places whereby we have a major language being used as an umbrella for national communication for economy for education for entertainment we have this general problem but I'm using Nigeria as a case study because 
I'm a Nigerian and I'm communicating from Nigeria. So, someone asked, is it possible for us to have different languages to be used instead of English language as a central language? To me, that question doesn't hold water at all. Let's go back to the period before 1897 when colonialization, colonialism started in most parts of Nigeria except Lagos, which actually got colonized early in the 1860s. So, is it possible for us to have every language in Nigeria, every Nigerian language to be used as an official language in its area of domain? The answer is yes, possible, 100%. And how do the people communicate generally? Of course. How do you communicate with people from other parts of the world? When you go to Europe, as a Nigerian, you go to Sweden, you want to work, you want to school, what do you do? You study Swedish, isn't that? You study the language that is being spoken in the domain you go to. Why won't that be replicated in Nigeria? We have a problem, someone will say. Yeah, we have over 500 languages in Nigeria. So, is it possible that we have every language being used solely in its domain? solely in its domain that sounds like a white elephant project at the meantime or in the meantime but it's possible but then what stops another language from being used alongside the native language as a core official language in India Hindi is not the language of everyone same thing with Pakistan Urdu is not the language of everyone but these are languages that are being used as a central government languages but there are other official languages in India same thing in South Africa, 11 official languages. How do they communicate in South Africa? Of course, English language, the English language is actually the major official language or major language of communication. But are the other languages which are acting as official languages playing a role or not? Of course, they are acting as core official languages. When it comes to general communication, they use English. Even in countries where you have a native language being used as a sole official language, like in the case of Germany, or maybe to be more apt, in the case of a country like Rwanda, where you have the entire population being native London speaking people, you still have about four co official languages with Kenya Rwanda. English is a co official language, French is a co official language, Swahili is a co official language. What is so special about the language being used as an official language or being called an official language? Now, we would have to understand something about the psyche of the human mind 
the human mind has a tendency of self-suppression self-imposed suppression when you have a major language being spoken majorly you have that language being used in the media you have it being used in schools you see that other languages which are acting as minority languages or minoritized languages begin to lose population the speakers begin to move to speaking the major language it has to do with influence it has to do with with confidence it has to do with being heard it has to be do with being able to express one's views to a larger population now when you have a language being used as a recognized language that instills in the minds of the people who speak that language the confidence self-confidence to want to do more with that language to want to develop it further to want to, to make it reach the furthest boundaries of the earth you tend to take away what makes the language become like something that belongs to only a few people you tend to take away the limit that that language has to attain you tend to give that very language a boost you tend to give it hope you tend to actually give it a greater boost both in moral and in its coverage or the wideness of its coverage you do a lot when you give a language that recognition to be used as a recognized official language especially within its territory now we have people living in a territory that is not native to them how do you expect those people to actually blend in and when you have a situation whereby people have to move rapidly from one location to the other maybe they are living in a, an environment where language a is being used and they have to move to another location where language b is being used how do they cope with the language barrier it's not a barrier if you look at it very well when you look at the EU you see a situation where people move from Belgium to Netherlands the Netherlands and then to Germany and then to Italy as they move do these countries speak English no they all have their languages which they speak now people who move to find jobs or educational opportunity career, what would they do they simply learn the languages what stops our african languages from being learned yes economy has to do with it we don't have enough places where people would work and earn and take care of their basic human needs also we have challenges with our educational institutions of course every language not every language actually have tertiary institutions in its boundaries so do you want to establish tertiary institutions in areas where every language is being spoken what stops that from happening remember before colonialism these were actually nations today we call nigeria a federation what is a federation a federation consists of states nations in other words every nation matters you take away one nation from a federation then you take away a vital part of that very federation then why do we promote only a few nations within a federation 
and downplay the others are we operating another system of governance that is not a federation anymore if a country can go to war to make sure that a particular nation remains a part of it but a country cannot go to war to make sure that the language of that very nation remains to make sure that the people actually get what a nation should have then what are you doing that's not a federation you are milking that's it. maybe you call it milkation not a federation anymore it's not more a federation it's a parasitic system of government now you're running whereby a few would milk the others for its profit maybe that's a topic for another day but this argument is about why every country i mean every language in a country should have the status of an official language declare every language a recognized language of course we have languages whereby they do not have orthographies but whose responsibility is it to create orthographies for those languages if the government has the responsibility of creating a local government area it has the responsibility of making sure that a local government chairman gets elected or maybe selected it depends on the country if a country can ensure that staff are being paid in a local government then a country can also ensure that the identity of the people are being protected is being protected language and identity cannot be separated take out the language the people are lost totally lost we have a case in jigawa state with a group called the aoyo now the aoyo they speak a chadic language an afro-asiatic language in the same category as the Hausa language in bauchi state you have the case of the warji language it's also a chadic language as a Hausa language but today you find out that the native speakers of those languages they no more speak those languages as a matter of fact Aoyo is a dead language it's extinct and the speakers now speak Hausa so when you classify the Aoyo people the Aoyos are Hausas rejected or accepted they have lost their language they have lost their identity forever the case is worse when you have a language which is not even documented for most European languages you have languages who are actually documented and when these speakers no more speak the languages the language can be revived you have the case of the Prussian German Prussia doesn't exist the form of German that was spoken in Prussia might not be used anymore but if there's a will to revive the Prussian German dialect, it will be revived because it's written. But what happens to the bulk of human languages, not just Nigerian languages, that are unwritten? When you have a government will that declares every language protected as a national language or as an official language or a co official language, as the case may be, you have the will to develop this orthography. You have the will to develop it as a means of education. You have the will to protect it through the power of the government. Now, my advocacy is that every language should have that right to be seen as an equal in a federation or whatever system of government a country owns. That very language should have the right exist in the same space as others do that's my submission once again i'm come by
uh, minoritized language advocates. Thank you. See you another time.